Hey, welcome back to Seven Minute Stories. I am here with the Megan Span. Yes. Yep. Welcome. Thank you. So today we're doing your seven minute story. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. So tell me a little bit about your journey. Uh, where you said some of the things you want to cover today is um, kind of your recent development. Uh, but briefly, uh, just tell me kind of how you grew up. Like, did you grow up in the church? Is faith a new thing for you? Tell me a little bit about that. Um, so I've grown up at New Life literally my whole life. I've been here since I was born, so 20 years. Um, pride myself in that. <laughs> You've been here longer than I have. Yeah, yeah, longer than Jake. Honestly, longer than all the pastors except for Pastor Rick. Um, but my family helped um, build this church, um, so I love it here. Um, known a lot of people, um, so it's been great. But I've grown up Christian, and so my parents, um, obviously, I've grown up here, like I said, so I always had that foundation. Um, but when I was about, I think, 12 or 13 years old, um, I don't know, I was talking to my aunt, actually, and she was talking to me about heaven and hell and things like that. And I was like, oh, man, like, am I actually saved? Like, all these, you know, thoughts about am I going to heaven? Am I going to hell? Like, the seriousness of it kind of came to me. And that's when I remember accepting Christ, like, actually praying the prayer, like, God, please forgive me. I repent of my sins. I want you to be the Lord of my life. Um, and I remember doing that on my cousin's bed, like, just praying. I was like, God, like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Um, and doing that seriously for the first time. I was probably about 12. And I remember telling my aunt and telling everyone and telling my mom. And I was like, yeah, I've always been a Christian. I've always believed in Jesus. But that was the time when I actually took it seriously, I think. And so then I got baptized. And then that's when I started serving on the worship team. So I was like 13-ish, 12, 13 years old. Um, and yeah, so it kind of just like rooted from there. And when I started serving, got connected with all the pastors. That's when I really started growing in my faith and like seeking God and like started youth group and everything. Um, and I was kind of at this stagnant point of, yes, I'm a Christian, but I'm also in high school. And it was kind of like that. I was different from other people in my high school, um, but I wasn't super, I don't know, I'd go through spurts of being like on fire for God and like not. And of course there are summer camps and things like that. Um, well, I think that's kind of a strange time in your life because like as a teen, I feel like a lot of times you don't know what you're supposed to be, but you just know you're supposed to be different. Yeah. And it, feel, it feels weird. Yeah. And it was it was hard because I didn't have a ton of super, like I didn't have a best friend growing up. Um, and so I just had a whole bunch of groups of friends at school that I do random stuff with and none of them were really Christian. And so I had my sister's friends here, like Audrey and like Kara and like all of the pastor's kids and everything. Um, but I don't know, like I didn't have my super core group of friends like my sister did. And so it was just hard trying to grow up Christian and do Christian things when you don't have like, like I had Christian friends, but not like a best friend, you know what I mean? Things like that. Um, but I was still Christian. Like I still love Jesus and everything. And I try my best to read my Bible and things like that. Um, but then recently, I think it was my senior year when I got into college that age, a lot of stuff started happening in my life, like serious things like my mom got diagnosed with cancer. And that's when I was like, man, I have to make a college decision. And there's just a lot of change and shifts. And so I was like, man, like, I mean, COVID. And so everything was happening. And that's when I really started to reflect. I was like, okay, what's going on? Like, is there, like, I knew there was a God, but I was like, man, what the heck? <laughs> yeah. Just a lot of stuff. And that's when I started to really take seriously what was going on. Um, and then I started going on your small group and everything and my sister started going to my cord small group um and so that's when we really started to dig in deep um well it seemed like and you can elaborate on this it seemed like when you came to my group it was that i'm a christian i know what the bible says but it was almost like this a yearning for authenticity or just to authenticate that experience where it was like you and i talked about hearing from god we talked about like really feeling the holy spirit and so it felt like a lot of that was what you were telling me in group was more like you know, I know theoretically what this is supposed to be, but you're looking for that experience. Yeah, for sure. I exactly what you just said. Like I've heard from God since I was like, what, like freshman, sophomore year of high school. And I knew seeing other people in my life, what it looked like to really be in relation with God. And I didn't feel like I had that. Like I could hear from God. I'd pray from God, pray from God. I'd pray with God and everything, have a prayer life relationship with him. But I still felt like something was missing. I was like, man, am I not reading enough? Or am I like, is there a better way to do this? You know? Um, and yeah. And so that's what I was kind of talking about, like the Holy Spirit. And like, I had little bits of it, but I was like, there's, I just know there's so much more that I can attach to and get. And I'm just, I didn't know how to do it, you know? Um, so yeah, that's when I kind of started the group and everything. And then my sister was telling me about Mike's group and they were the advanced group, you know, or whatever they wanted to call themselves. Um, 
and they did more teachings and you know more in-depth study and I was like man like I remember her talking to me and my mom about it and I was like that's really cool the stuff about like demons and the holy spirit and healing and I mean just all that world and I remember telling you I was like I have no idea what all that is about and I want to get into that and um that's when we used to, like our group started doing podcasts and stuff and learning about that and I was taking notes and learning about it um and during that time, you were also struggling with um, a diagnosis that you had. Yeah, I was just about to say that. I completely forgot about that in the story. My senior year, um, when everything kind of started spiraling down, I started to feel really nauseated every day, sick. Like, I mean, everything with food, like your body processing everything did not work for me ever at all. And it sucked. And I kind of just dealt with it until I think probably like May of 2020 um, when I was like going to go into college. And that's kind of when COVID died down a little bit like we got out of quarantine we were able to go to the doctor again um and i went to multiple doctors family doctor specialists and everyone said there's nothing wrong with you we can't find anything besides one specialist found i was sensitive to gluten like that is the only thing and it was such such a small chance but i just stuck to it and was like that's the problem i have to go gluten free and i did and still i went to college and i think that was more of a distraction for me um, emotionally and physically when I don't feel good, being with people helps me feel better, like distracts me from it. And so I was like, oh, like I'm better now, like it's great. Even though I remember I looked back at my notes, I took like a health diary and I still felt sick like every other day and every day. Um, I was nauseated, like feeling like you're gonna throw up every day literally sucks so bad. Um, but anyways, so through that, and then I think the semester of my freshman year, the spring semester, I moved back home because my scholarships changed because I changed my major. There was a lot of change there. And that's when I started to feel really sick again because I was at home. I was away from my friends. So I didn't have that distraction anymore. And then I was like, man, like this sucks. Went to more doctors again. They did so many tests. Like they did like endoscopies. I mean, like literally like everything they could. And they're like, you're fine. <laughs> like You have pain. We don't know what it is. Yeah. Good luck to you. Yeah. They're like, we can see your stomach is inflamed and you're up, like it's upset, but we don't know why. Nothing's causing it. We've done all these allergy tests, like blah, blah, blah. And they were like, we don't even see that gluten is an issue for you anymore. And I was like, are you freaking kidding me? Like what on earth? And so through that, I was probably 2021 20, um, in that area. And so I was like, man, what the heck? So it's like May. I'm in the summertime, I'm going to be a sophomore this fall. My sister's talking about healing and prayer, you know, in their small group. And so I have her and Ben pray over me in the summertime. I remember I got super sick. We came back from middle school camp and it turns out everybody actually had COVID, but I was like, <laughs> I'm dying. What's going on? But they prayed over me. And fun fact, nobody actually got sick. Ben and Allie, my whole family didn't get sick, even though they all laid hands on me and prayed. But, um, I had COVID, so that sucked. That was awful. But, um, then I got another prayer session that September, so like fall of my sophomore year, which is what I'm in right now. Um, and I went in there, I was like, I'm going to get healed. This is going to be great. And they actually went through um, the prayer session and found like the unforgiveness for my sister and our relationship and how um, just a lot of things with that and like a lot of growth from that and a lot of forgiveness from that um, and Isn't relationships. That funny how you go in and you're like, I want this. <laughs> and God's like, yeah, but let's Actually, talk about this. <laughs> yeah. And it's not like even I went in there and I had no idea. Like me and my sister had kind of a really rough relationship growing up. You know how sisters are and everything. Um, and then when she got married, it was getting better. And so I had no idea that, that I still had like things harp, excuse me, things harbored in my heart against her. Um, and I was like, man, like, shoot. And so we prayed over that. Um, they prayed over healing, baptized me in the Holy Spirit. Um, and something funny I remember Adam said distinctly was she's already got it. Like we don't need to baptize her. Like she, we just need to fill her up. Like she already has it. And yeah. so I was like, okay, that's, that's, that's interesting. But even from that, I still felt sick all the time, like nauseated. I mean, couldn't eat anything. Like it was just annoying and everything. Um, and I was still going gluten free, gluten free this whole entire time still staying away from it, trying my best. And it's frustrating because everything is more expensive trying to eat it at your house. So I knew that was like, I, I hated that for my parents, but then trying to go out with my friends, um, that sucked because no places really have gluten-free and if they do, they're gluten-friendly and it's just this big mess. And I hated being that person like, oh, we can't go here. I can't eat here, I'm sorry. Um, so that was frustrating. But I started my sophomore year, um, which was crazy and hectic. I took like 20 credit hours. I was in three different clubs doing um, three different jobs. It was just a mess. Um, and so that was a whole other thing just to add stress upon my life. <laughs> um, but it was good. Um, but I remember 
going through that and really being like, I'm never doing this again. (laughs) Um, But in that, my relationship with God was really like, I don't want to say declining, but being stagnant. Mm -hmm. Because I'd go in, I'd pray every day, I'd do this, I'd do that, but I wouldn't really study the Bible, maybe go in spurts. Um, Just trying to survive is really how I describe that point in my life. Um, Because I took on just way too much, as I always do. Um, But I remember ending that semester, um, it was great. I was like, okay, I'm not doing this again. I've learned from this. And then winter break happened. Excuse me. Winter break happened. I had Christmas break and me and Maddie Cole are going to Passion. And if you don't know what Passion is, it's this big conference for like, I think it's 18 to 25 year olds, just a really Christian conference. And it's great. And we were super excited to go and her parents had paid for it for her Christmas present. And so I was going paid for it. She was going paid for it. We were just so excited. And I remember a couple days before I was going, I was really nervous, like, man, what am I going to eat? Like, I don't want to inconvenience her parents because they're paying for all this stuff. Um, And I remember just wrestling with that. And then my sister texted me, actually, and she texted me a verse from 1 Timothy. And it was about, um, I can't remember, I should have wrote it down, but it was, remember, um, giving thanks to God and receiving thanks, and then um, you will be blessed. And so she was like, do this when you pray over your food. Like, like, you'll be blessed. Like, you won't have an issue with it. Like, just... um, offer thanksgiving to god for it you know and so but i remember texting her i was like no this won't work like i've tried this and all this stuff and i was truly frustrated like i remember like crying so many times like over the past two years because i was like well god why aren't you healing me i don't understand what's going on i'm so frustrated like i just want to feel good like it was so hard to like live daily life and still feel like trash all the time like as you can imagine and i was just trying to make sure like be the perfect person i could like make sure everyone was okay and do my schoolwork and be the youth intern and just do all all these things while still feeling like disgusting all the time like it was really hard and it's frustrating and I remember texting her back that and she was like Megan like have you tried it yet <laughs> have you it's tried like, did you just pray? try doing it because <laughs> I'm like I've tried the prayer sessions you know I, and that hasn't worked yet which they worked in different ways but I still felt sick but again I never tried going gluten free because I was too scared and I remember me and her just texting back and forth and she was like Megan you need to have faith And I was offended. I was like, Elizabeth, like, I have faith. I'm a Christian. But I honestly didn't. And I remember her texting that and us texting back and forth that day. And I finally was like, you know what? I haven't been and I'm going to now. And she was like, just pray over yourself one more time that you are healed. Thank God for your healing that he's already given you and eat normally. And I was like, you know what? We're going to do it. (laughs) So I remember that I prayed over myself. I thanked God for my healing and I started eating gluten free. You mean you started eating gluten? Yes. Yeah. I started eating normally again after that. Um, I didn't, I ate gluten. I ate so much gluten. It was great. Like breadsticks <laughs> and pretzels. <laughs> yes, cake and literally a sandwich and pizza. Um, so I went to Passion and that was great. And I remember coming home and yeah, there was one instance where I got super sick. I never threw up or anything, but I was in a lot of pain. And I, get, I don't know what that was from. It could have literally been from anything. Um, but I was like, God, like, what are you doing? I'm so frustrated. And I was like, no, like, I'm healed. I'm going to claim this and it's whatever. It's fine. And since then, I've been eating gluten-free and I haven't struggled with... You've been eating gluten. Oh my gosh, I keep saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since I've been eating gluten, I've been eating a normal person's diet, I guess. Like, I haven't been really thinking about what I'm eating besides, I guess, like health wise, you know, you want to be healthy, but I haven't been restricting myself from anything and it's been amazing. And yeah, I haven't struggled with any of that since. So. Well, praise God. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's amazing that that's the the step sometimes for us. Cause we all think that like, I have faith because I believe in Jesus and it's like faith is, st- is taking that step out and being faithful to what God's promised you. And that's yeah. hard. Yeah. I was, so scared. I remember Allie texted me. She was like, fear is a liar, ma'am. Like, that's not, it's, it is. It's so true. I think it's, that was the text that made me like realize. And I was like, yes, that's true. And I'm being fearful and that's not of God. And so I need, I had to step out in faith and I had to step out of that fear and be courageous and truly lean on God. Like, cause that is something I've always struggled with. Like, I'm a planner, I'm an organizer, I wanna look ahead, like I want everything to be perfect and I have an issue with controlling everything because I have that, I don't wanna be fearful. But in that, I'm being fearful, you know? And so, I don't know, but doing that with her and having her help me with that, like honestly, changed a lot of my Christian walk. Well, thanks. Thanks for sharing that and thanks for coming on and uh, telling us part of your story. For sure. We'll see you guys next time here on 7 Minute Stories.